I've been with the, the lab for 14 years now. I'm the agronomist there um, on the research side of things. And our research goal has been to determine um, the innovative crop solutions, human product, uh, doing the applications at, at differing timings throughout the growing season for the plants, depending on their growth stage. On uh, corn production in different landscapes, soil types, and, and growing seasons. This, this is our research farm plots over at uh, Iowa State Field, just west of campus. Um, we've got 144 plots here, we've got 12 replications, which gives us a lot of strength. When we have something, you know, if we lose a replication to whatever, you know, natural events or something like that, we got to plenty of others to be able to get enough data that we can do good hard statistics on it. Most plot research has only got four replications to it. We got three times that. These are the, the field long replicated strips and the treatments that we chose for these, the control which means no application at all. We had the, a pre-emerge application, V1, V3, V6, and I specifically uh, had us target V3, V6, and the controls and the pre-emerge uh, for our measures for this year. There seemed to be less wind damage on um, the areas that had the humic product as opposed to where it didn't. And what, would, what the measure would be to help point that out would be the lignin. With having a little bit more lignin, more woody type tissue in that plant, the sturdier that's going to be and the more it's going to hold up to uh, damage from the wind, from hail, things like that. We had the, I think it was number two here, the pre-plant incorporate was uh, the only one that was statistically significantly higher than the control. But across most of those treatments, the, um, they were still higher than the control in, in a lot of the cases. Th this, is, this is that strength of being able to take this product, do it, test it over a number of landscapes, number of farming conditions, and this is, this is where the rubber hits the road. You guys all know that for every farmer. Does it, you know, finding out what mechanism, why it really does this, I mean, it might be interesting to a farmer. We know that. It's interesting to us. But who really cares when you're a farmer and you're trying to, you know, stay in farming for the next year? It's got to do something for your yields. Last year, off of 30 different farms across Iowa, we only had like four or five instances went in those uh, on farm checks from the treated compared to the, the untreated where you didn't have much of an effect or maybe a, a little bit of a dip, but uh, predominantly across the board there was yield increases and some of them quite significant, 30 so you know, bushels per acre on average it was 10. Again, we only had four or five instances where the yield was either no effect or, or a little bit negative, while you know, dramatically across the board we have uh, yield bumps. You can see that probably about uh, 75 to 80 percent of the time you're getting yield bumps with this with your, your farmers as you know, opposed to not having much of an effect at all. <laughs> and we'll do the, the research on that. And statistically, from last year when we crunched these numbers, doing hard statistics, it was dramatically, statistically significant. There was a positive yield boost with it. But we know what happens with these humic products. Secondary root, root to growth, it just goes bonkers with this stuff. Now, when you think about, okay, when, when are you going to get your best benefit for having all that extra root growth? It's not when it's wet. <laughs> you already have plenty of moisture out there for the plant to grab without all of those extra roots. The big benefit's going to be when it's dry, when you got moisture-limiting conditions or nutrient-limiting conditions. When you've got more roots out there, that's insurance against a dry year. When you have a stressed year, you know, corn on corn, it just sucked. It was terrible. But when it was in rotation, the yields were just as good as in a good year for on the rotation because you're not, you know, the, and it, a lot of it comes back to that rooting again. It, you know, on a good year, you know, it isn't going to hurt you, but you won't get as much benefit. In a bad year, that's where it's going to save you. Um, and like I said, in, in uh, a good moisture, really good moisture year, and on these field strips, the 
there was a yield boost even in super wet conditions. You know, it, it, this is the controls here, and you can see that no matter if it was the hand or the combine harvest, we got a yield boost. And uh, it doesn't, you know, these guys aren't pricing this stuff, so it's costing an arm and leg. It doesn't take much of a yield boost to cover the cost for it. And it looks like they're, they're going to easily be able to say to the farmers that they're covering the cost for them now in the best of conditions. If we get one year where it's going to be the worst of conditions for dry, it's, it's going to be, I, I expect it to be pretty dramatic. Again, this is another one of the field lawn strips uh, that we did here right next to the plant. And again, you know, whether you look at the hand numbers or the done by the combine, you still got a yield boost. You know, obviously when you got a control with about 200 bushel per acre, you, you, uh, you're already kind of topping out that engine and we're still getting a yield boost through those of uh, anywhere up to about uh, five, six bushel per acre. But I, I would like to remind everyone again is that just because you can or cannot measure that in the soil, that doesn't mean that's what the crop the crop seen or not seen. Because of those roots, you're going to get more. We know that this stuff in, in, improves rooting. <laughs> and if you've got more roots, you're going to grab more nutrients. That's just all there is to it.